Welcome to Awakening the Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christian Strang, and today we have a very special guest, another part of our 2024 interview series. Jennifer Elling is here with us today. She is a nutritional guide, and this is a particularly sweet moment for me because I have known Jennifer since I was 22 years old. We have known each other for two decades and we have been on this incredible expansion of light together and it's really just such a joy to have her on the show with us today. I want to share a little bit more with you about Jennifer. Jennifer Elling has been on a health journey the majority of her life. She's a veteran cleanser, and the craziest cleanse she ever did was a gallbladder flush. The most intense were the Ayurvedic cleanses. By far the easiest and most gentle on her body have been Purium's ultimate lifestyle transformation. Jennifer's goal is to help others feel better and realize how much food is affecting their health. She enjoys sharing what she's learned so others don't make the same mistakes that she did. Jennifer, this is so fun to have you here with us today. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to to share with you and your listeners. Yeah, this is going to be a blast. Okay, so as always, when we do these interviews, we start by asking the question about you sharing your awakening, whatever awakening story you are called to share, because we recognize that awakening is not a one-time event. It's something that happens throughout our incarnation if we are willing to experience them. And so I love sharing these stories because it helps illustrate to myself and to all of us who are listening all the magical ways and all the different ways and variety of ways that awakenings take place. So Jennifer, I want to open it up to you and hear which awakening story you'd like to share with us today. Thank you. It was fun to think about these. And I, for myself, I will call them profound moments of clarity. And it has been interesting to me how many of them have happened while I've been doing cleanses. And we can talk about that a little later. But um, the one I wanted to talk about today happened in 2017. And there were two things that were going on, I remember vividly. One was that I was having sessions with you, which I still am and have been for years. (laughs) And um, I was trying to take my picture for the update to send over to you because you look at our energy field from our picture and I could not get a clear picture. I remember I was on vacation with a girlfriend and I was in the hotel room and it wasn't that the light was bad. And I like tried, I tried so many times that I ended up just sending you a picture of like a blurry face with color. It had like actually other colors. It was the most interesting pictures that I was getting. And I remember you saying, it's like you're wearing a mask. And I'm sure I don't remember my session vividly, but I'm sure it was about like uncovering where I was masking up in Mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And Not long after that, I'd say less than a month, I was in the middle of an Ayurvedic cleanse and I just saw like it was a a dramatic visual of a pulling back a curtain and I was on both sides of the curtain and I saw what I was doing in relationship and I was totally contorting myself to please a man just going along with with basically whatever you know he wanted if this works for him I was like oh yeah great and and I just saw so clearly what I was doing and it was alarming I did mm-hmm. not realize I was doing that. And I know that that was one of my ways of masking and people pleasing. Um, I mean, looking back, 
over the years, I've always been somewhat of a people pleaser. And it's something that I still need to watch. I um, notice it in myself and others, um, especially with the dating. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, it's very prevalent. I don't do it as much anymore. And I catch myself right away when I am doing it. But one of the things that the, the man said to me in 2017, who, who was my partner for years, but he made a very, very good point because this was in the beginning of our relationship. He said, oh, I, yeah, I thought you were the one, but if you weren't even showing up as you, how do I know if you're the one? Mm, whoa. The ripples of that yeah. <laughs> right so huge for, for all of us who are people pleasers and recovering people pleasers. Ooh. Yeah, that, that is so huge. So I really like, this is such a big thing in this people pleaser program, right? And, and in the feminine, we have been part of a patriarchal hijacked agenda. So this specific people pleasing for the masculine partner is like a very deeply rooted program. So I love that you're bringing this in and that you're in the middle of a cleanse when all of this is happening and you're having energy medicine work with us. And like, that's huge revelation. And that's when so many of my big revelations have happened to have been in the middle of, I'd say, um, nutritional up leveling. And I think after listening, I just today, I listened to your podcast with Kimberly Sanders, where you were actually being interviewed and you talked about spiritual nutrition and kind of the, the, the pieces fell into place for me of, of why that happens right? Our nutrition is so important to not only how we feel in our bodies, but also our spiritual up leveling. A hundred percent. And it makes sense when you, even when you just look with the logic, like, oh, the body is fueled by what you put in it. So if you're putting chemicals and poison, it's going, it's going to be much more difficult to have spiritual awakenings. And of course the agenda knows this, but it's also really shocking how much programming is out there of like, oh, the body's just a meat suit. And that's in the, you know, religious and spiritual realms of like, oh, you know, you're not your body, all these different things. And yet the body is the vehicle with which we experience everything here including spiritual awakening. I love that you're bringing this in, Jennifer. This is so powerful. It has been very powerful for me. And my hope is that other people become more conscious of, of how food is affecting them. Not, And I'm not even saying do a cleanse. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, stop and take a moment after you've eaten something and how does your body feel? Mm -hmm. mm. Love this because that's just a very simple thing that everyone listening can do myself included. Like you eat something and just tune in. How do I feel right now? Just, just noticing that is going to give you so much information. Huge. And it's, for me, it's interesting how it has changed over time. I used to love, and I, I still kind of love it, spinach artichoke dip. And oh, yeah. I was at the coast about a month ago, and I ordered some at a restaurant. And five bites in, and my stomach was letting me know that that yeah. was not the right thing to be eating. Yeah. And it was it was dramatic. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Cause that you said something so profound there about it changes over time, right? Things that we could eat before over time can change as we grow and expand and become more of who we really are. And I, I can reflect on that in many instances. I mean, I was paleo 
the paleo diet back in the day, not real paleo because real paleo man was eating herbs and foraging and all of those things. But like <laughs> the, the, the artificial matrix version of paleo, I was eating animals three or more times a day for years. It's so nuts. And I couldn't figure out why I had so many digestive issues and skin issues and, and all kinds of things. So why I would love to just talk a little bit more about this, why it changes over time, because if we're doing any amount of spiritual work, and I would say anyone listening to this is doing something to be called to this podcast, you are vibrationally shifting. So the vibrational countenance, the frequency of your body is shifting. So foods that are the same consciousness or vibration as you are, are going to be easy for you to digest. But as you raise your frequency, you are going to have to call in higher frequency nutrition. Do you want to speak a little bit on that as well, Jennifer? Because I love this piece. Yes, I I totally agree with that. And I really noticed that when I stopped eating animals. I still eat eggs and fish, but um, I think chicken was my last holdout. And then when I I raised chickens from little babies and yeah. I have them for eggs, I, there was like no way I could could eat a chicken. And I, I know it was you who said, you know, you are eating the consciousness of the animal and how the animal was raised and treated. And all of that is being absorbed into your body. And I was like, Oh yeah. And, and when you don't even know when you're buying something in a grocery store and you don't know how that animal has been treated. I, it just got way too dicey for me to, to continue eating yeah. animals. Yeah. And that's, and that is a really fascinating piece that I think we forget to think about, even if we're talking about fruits and vegetables, but certainly when we're talking about animals, we don't know the life cycle of this animal. And so often, and I, I look back on when I was, you know, eating animal flesh three or more times a week, I would have, you know, intense fear or intense anxiety, or was that from me? Or was that from what I was consuming? Things get really tricky when you start thinking about how was that animal killed? What was the energy and the consciousness of that animal at the time of it being harvested? And what was that slaughter process like? And what was the energy of the people that were doing that? That's all going into the flesh of the animal. And then humans thinking that their emotional states are their true emotions when they could also be picking up on whatever they've eaten and the consciousness of what they've eaten. So that starts to change the game of when we think about, you know, this isn't pushing a certain diet agenda. This is about understanding the earth that we live on and the consciousness and how much consciousness of the animals of the food that we eat affects us. That, I mean, that really shifts things for us. It really does. And to take it one step further, I met a lady recently who works at one of the dairy factory farms. Mm. And um, I have never seen one of those in person. <laughs> and um, the description, and I'm glad I have it. Yeah. I'll say that I've mm -hmm. seen um, dairy farms out here, which was one of the reasons I stopped eating cheese, I thought they were treated um, less than humanely here to see that how they're tied up and their living conditions. But to hear about this factory farm and how how they are being treated in there, it is horrific. And the number of the amount of money that's being spent on vaccines to keep the cows yeah. alive to ship then you know to make cheese out of um i just it's it's almost beyond me and um if i if i went into it further i'd start crying so we'll just stop there <laughs> 
I know, I know. It's very intense. And you bring up a great point about the inoculation and the injecting that they're doing to the animals. Like the the injection schedule for the animals is just as crazy as what they're doing to the little humans on earth, if not more. And so also when humans are consuming animal flesh and dairy, to your point, they're also taking in that whatever is in those injections. So it really forces us to confront some some deeper spiritual truths, but also what how do we want to care for these temples that we're in? And if if humans don't feel like you feel and I feel compassionate towards the animals, they have to at least have some compassion towards themselves of what do I really want to put in to my body and what is the frequency that I am putting into my body because what frequency you're putting in is what your output is going to be. It's like, I think everyone's had the experience of, you know, eating a bunch of sugar and then feeling super lethargic and tired, right? That's a very easy illustration. My example with eating, you know, animal flesh and then having a lot of anxiety, maybe folks aren't connecting those dots, but I think we've all had that experience of too much sugar and you see it in the toddlers and little children and they have too much sugar, what happens? Well, they're melting down, they're flipping out. Why is that happening? Because the frequency is not a supportive frequency for the thriving of the human. So true. And that is one of the things I love about Perium, the frequency of how that food is created and delivered to us and for the listeners who who don't know it's um, superfoods grown in regenerative regenerative soil so they're putting more into the soil than they're taking out it's 100 percent organic and it feels amazing in the body in my body it has been definitely an up level in my nutrition interesting story. I have always loved salads, just craved greens. I could eat like three salads a day and still never feel like I got enough greens. And since I have been taking Perium, taking is not really the right word. <laughs> since I've been on the Perium journey, yes. I have felt that that need for greens has been fulfilled. My body does no, no longer is constantly saying, I need greens, you know, yeah. give me a salad. And that's a nice, it's nice to have that under control. While not a bad craving, right? If you're going to crave anything, it, it might as well be lettuce, but, but it was still felt off to me that I could never satisfy that need. And with Perium, I have. And we know that differential is the level of nourishment and nutrition that is actually in the food, right? Because I'm with right. you. Since I started eating Perium and living that lifestyle, I don't crave things, number one. Number two, I need less food to feel full because I'm actually being nourished. When we overeat and we're, you know, like, I just can't get enough salads or for some of us, it's I can't get enough chips or enough, you know, whatever it is, that's literally your body just trying to get nourishment and true nutrition. So one of the things that just naturally happens when you're getting the proper nutrition is you're not having, to your point, those cravings. And it's not that sense of like, I can't get enough right? Because the body is like trying to pull everything it can from what the humans are giving it. But if it's not the proper fuel, it will continue to have cravings. So cravings are letting you know something's out of balance in your body. Your body is wanting true nourishment. And then you have to go on the journey. And like you said here, Jennifer, which I encourage everyone to write this down, how is your food created and how is it delivered to you? You need to know that to know if you're harming your body or if you're supporting your body. Well, what kind of packaging is your food coming in? That's the other thing I love about us being guided to Purium is that it's compostable packaging. It's packaging that is not harmful to the human or to anyone else. 
So really looking at what you're currently eating, how is it created? Who is creating it? What is that person's consciousness? And so often, right, Jennifer, we don't even know, right? You go to a mainstream right. grocery store, you have no idea who's been putting this food together, who's been working on it. You don't know their consciousness. Exactly. Mm. And that's mildly terrifying when I think <laughs> about it. Like, oh my God, we have no idea. What are they putting into the food? We look at Dr. Emoto's work, right? With the water. And what is the person thinking who's packaging your food? If they're in some big factory and they're being paid barely enough, what is their thought forms that they're putting into that food as they're packaging it? That's going into the food and that is coming to you. So really shifting so that we know the consciousness of the people that are putting our food together and we're buying in a way we're we're activating this higher consciousness. So I'd love to hear some of your thoughts, Jennifer, on what are some ways that people can start to bring more consciousness to this understanding about their food? Like what are some, some things that you've done that have helped make how you eat be more in alignment with this higher consciousness and this higher frequency that we're talking about? Well, I, even if this is, if people are listening and they think, wow, this is overboard, I would recommend just start looking at the labels of food. If you're eating processed food, read the labels. If there are words that you can't even pronounce that are really long, why are we eating those things? If there's food dyes, I would recommend not eating those things. For me, I have switched to organic food as much as possible. And I'm eating real food. So I'm really limiting packaged processed food. Mm -hmm. I still have some chips that I love, like Mary's crackers. I can find some without soy and mm -hmm. the black, black pepper and seaweed, those are, are my favorite. So yeah. I have a few things that, you know, I'm still buying that I would call processed, but overall I, I am making my food unless I'm traveling. Then I'm like, we were at the Perium national convention recently and we were ordering from a place where restaurant where we could get our food delivered to us. And and it was mainly organic food, and we knew what we were eating. I won't say we totally knew the consciousness of the food, but do as well as you can would be my advice. And if you think it's too much work, think how much work it's going to be to be sick, because I've been there. Mm. Can you tell us more about that? Do you feel called or comfortable to do that? I was in so much pain, body pain in my 30s and mm -hmm. early 40s that I wasn't sure I was going to make it to 50. Mm -hmm. I was in that much pain. And then I was like, if I make it to 50, do I want to, because I'm in so much pain now, what's it going to look like when I'm 50? Mm -hmm. And I think there's this compound effect. Well, I know there is because I am, I'm seeing it in young people, right? The, so all of this is passed down from how our mother ate, and I'm not blaming my mother, but it's a compound effect of, of the toxins that are in our environment mm -hmm. and they're being passed on to the children and then they're being amplified by what we're eating. And I will tell you that, you know, after college, I, I, I thought a well-rounded dinner was, was a plate of nachos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't on the best best eating eating path and um it took me I first um 
realized how much sugar was affecting my body and cut out sugar. And I lost like 15 pounds in like a couple weeks yeah. by just not eating sugar. And then um, just, you know, started eliminating more things. And the last thing that I eliminated, which was actually my mom who said it, and I was, I think I was in my, I'm 61 now. So I was, um, I believe I had just turned 50. And I um, was getting curious about a low grade stomach ache. And this is one thing that I want listeners um, to pay attention to. Because after you eat, you should feel better. You mm -hmm. shouldn't feel worse. Yes. And I think sometimes things become so habitual, we just normalize them. And for me, normal was kind of a low grade stomach ache. Mm -hmm. And it was just there after I ate. And my mom said to me, she goes, I wonder if gluten is an issue for you. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it can't be. I've got out all this other stuff, right? It, it can't be. <laughs> and um, so I played with it and I took it out of my diet for three weeks and the stomach ache went away and I still wasn't convinced. So I tried reintroducing it, not once, not twice, but three times, <laughs> because three times a charm for me. And uh, I was like, oh yeah, gluten is a thing for me. So um, I think by stopping and really paying attention to how our bodies feel, that we can gain a lot of information about how food is affecting us. And know that you are actually creating your future self by what you eat now. And that's why I'm so big on this, on the health kick, because I want to live well older. Like I don't want to be sick and then die. I want to live, 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 and then just kind of sail out of here. Yes. So. And if listeners don't know this, Jennifer so graciously disco disclosed she's 61 and she has people tell her repeatedly, and I've had the good fortune of experiencing this, how radiant she is. So she is not just someone espousing wisdom because she read a book. She actually lives everything she's talking about here. And when you see her and connect with her, you can see that. And she has said some revolutionary things right now. I want to make sure you all are writing it down because I know I am. This should not be a revelation, but what you said, Jennifer, is so profound. You should feel better, not worse, after eating. Mic drop. <laughs> like, <laughs> that shouldn't be so profound, but in the world today, in the food that is available, it is. So, like, everyone listening, that that's all... Like if you take anything from this, this beautiful interview today, take that after you eat, check in and see, do you feel better or do you feel worse? And then the second profound revelation she just gave us is you are creating your future self by what you're eating now. So is your future self a nacho? Or is your future self a green juice? Or what is the future that you're creating for yourself? That is so powerful. And we can all use that as a resource when we're, when we're opening the fridge or opening the cupboard or going to the restaurant. What do I want my future self to look like, feel like, experience? Well, what I'm eating is setting the stage for that. And drinking. Wow. Thank you, Jennifer. That was so profound. We started to get into it a little bit and I was writing down the bullet points you gave us, but I want to formally ask the question, what is lighting you up right now and how you're creating the golden age? And what would you recommend that those listening do at this time to create the golden age in their personal life now? 
Well, I'm really loving sharing Purium, the organic superfoods, just because it makes me feel so wonderful and it helps me with insights. It helps me lead a better life. I mean, with insights, I know what to do, when to do. Life is easy. Mm, Love that. Um. And I, I'm enjoying sharing it um, so others can have the same experience. And I would recommend that people, whether or not, you know, they're interested in a cleanse or a different eating lifestyle, try and eat organic. There, there is organic real food um Mm -hmm. i heard something recently about if you know there's certain sections in the grocery store that are labeled health food well what is the rest of the what's in the (laughs) rest of the grocery store right and i i would say it's not even food a lot of this is not even food and Mm -hmm. it is actual poison to our bodies so be conscious be mindful And if you don't care, just accept what the consequences might be, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're seeing that um, already. And um, I, it just, it, whether we're going to be a burden on the medical system or loved ones or what I choose not not to be a burden. Hmm. Wow, that's so powerful. So for listeners, Jennifer's given us some really great next steps for how you can create your own personal golden age. First, knowing that cleanses, detoxes actually provide support and promote spiritual awakening. I love, 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 love that you brought that in. Because for anyone who's like, well, where's my spiritual awakening? Why am I not having one? Okay, Jennifer's got a way for you to do that. (laughs) Get connected with her. She'll get you connected with a, a gentle and yet powerful um, cleanse and detox that will allow you to have that next level of awakening. And also you talked about upgrading your eating lifestyle. So really looking at eating organic when you have to travel, I'm going to bring it back to what you're talking about earlier. When you have to travel, just doing the best you can to choose restaurants that embody that lifestyle. So to your point, when we were all traveling together, um, was it last week <laughs> at the time of this um, recording? I think it was just last week. You can't know everything about who's making the food and all of that, but you can go to the restaurant's website and see their ethos and see how are they packaging the food. So our, our food packaging came in compostable packaging from the restaurant. So we could connect in to see what their philosophy is. So you can do that with the restaurants that you choose when you're traveling. Just see what the company ethos is. Maybe you can't meet the person who's formulating and creating it, but you can tune in and see what is is the the commitment they have to the earth, to nature, to humans through the food that they're creating. So the first thing you can do is switch to organic, limit the packaging. So limit buying packaged food. The U.S. does have, um, sadly, not the highest standards for its organic food. So we just have to know that and we work with that the best that we can. So limiting the packaging of the food really helps. Like I already mentioned, when you're traveling, choose food that is as organic as possible and as a high of consciousness as possible. And then I really love that you brought this in, Jennifer, for people that might be listening to this, it might be the old school, um, you know, new age spirituality, which is like, oh, it's just a meat suit. I don't care. Like, you know, this body is temporary. Um, Think about the quality of life that you want to have when you're getting close to making your transition. The way that we have seen our grandparents and our parents age is not the aging process that mother, father, God set up for us. That is the aging process of poisoned humans. So you can really tune in and see how do I want to leave my legacy? What what do I want to leave for my children and grandchildren or the systems that are, are meant to support me if you don't have children? 
and then make choices from that place. So I love that you brought that in, Jennifer, because that's something that often people are not thinking about and and would really benefit them to think about, you know, what kind of um, impact do I want to have as I grow in my aging process? Exactly. And I think I have the benefit of uh, really looking at that because I'm closer to it, right? At 61, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're going to love this. Federal oh, Express just dropped off my Perium Smart Order. So my <laughs> food has just been delivered to my door. What timing? That's such perfect divine timing. And yeah, how, how convenient can we get uh, the food is delivered to your door? These are not supplements. It is actual food delivered to your door in recyclable and compostable packaging. Like so incredible that we have the opportunity to live in this new way. Jennifer, I'm so thrilled you were with us today and we have some really powerful next steps that you gave us and some really, I mean, just so profound these gems that you gave us today that are really so simple to just start to tune into. So thank you so much for bringing this in. What, how can people connect with you? So let's say somebody wants to know more about your journey. They want to know more about um, the solutions that you provide for humans. What's the best way for them to connect with you? Ah, thanks so much, Christian. And thank you for your time and the opportunity to, to do this. I really appreciate it. And for listeners to find me, um, the best way is I share on Instagram, Jennifer Elling one and LinkedIn, Jennifer Elling in the Portland, Oregon metro area. Those are two great ways to connect with me. And if you want to send me a direct message with those, we can get together and have a, have a talk and and hear what, what you're interested in learning or pursuing. Beautiful. And I want for listeners, Ellen is E-L-L-I-N-G. Is that correct, Jennifer? Yes, thanks. Perfect. Thank you again for being here. I just love, I, I want to go back and do a, an inner child to my 22, 23 year old self as we were meeting and be like, Hey, you guys are going to do a podcast together. You're going to be <laughs> spending decades together, growing and expanding. It's so amazing. And I'm so grateful you're here on earth, Jennifer, and doing this beautiful work. Um, I do want to highlight before we close that Jennifer brought in that awakening. She refers to it as profound moments of clarity. And I love that so much. I wrote it down for those of you that are inspired, write it down as well. These profound moments of clarity, may you be blessed with many of those because these profound moments of clarity lead you to your most radiant and epic life. Thank you so much for listening. All of you that were here with us today, we appreciate you so much and value you. If this podcast episode was of inspiration and benefit to you, please consider forwarding it on to someone in your life, in your swirl, or on your social media that could benefit from it. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christian Strang, and this has been Awakening the Podcast.